Hey everyone, I just want to go over this Loverman Big Band. This would be some of the first things that I do when I sit down uh, and start a Big Band chart. Um, you may do it differently, but I uh, just have a few things I think that are essential to going over. And just planning out the chart and making sure that, you know, you have a little bit of a, of a map, road map as far as what you want to do with it. Some of the things that, you know, the tune you choose, some of the things that are inherent, um, you know, will be pretty obvious, such as this one. We're going to go over Lover Man. We need to figure out the setting, like is it going to be a feature number? Is it going to be a, like a section feature or a solo feature? Also the style. You know, you can have a tune that uh, you can change the style to. I've done it many times. Take a swing tune and make it a samba, things like that. What would the tempo be? Slow, medium, uh, easy swing, up tempo, whatever. So this one, uh, Lover Man, I chose Ballad, and we voted on it in the in the Jazz Club Nine as an alto feature. So we got the setting, which is an alto feature. We got the style, which is a ballad. The tempo inherently in a ballad is going to be fairly slow. So next thing you got to do is figure out what key you want to be in, or keys, because you you may plan out a key change. The key of this one, I believe, is standard F major. I'm not sure if Charlie Parker may have recorded in a, in a different key. But this is the uh, key that a lot of lead sheets were in, and it does fit the key for alto sax well. So if you have a feature number, make sure that the key that you, uh, you choose fits the instrument that you're writing for. So this may not work so well for trombone, but it works good for alto. may not work work well for trumpet, uh, but it works good for alto. So, uh, you know, just remember that the key is really important. And if you're going to change keys, make sure that it doesn't go out of the range or, or really press the range of that soloist or the big band itself. So the form and length. Obviously, a ballad can't be, you know, 25 choruses like an up-tempo tune could be. So this is an AABA form, um, which a lot of standards are. So well, what I've chosen to do is pretty much do about two choruses. And it's probably going to be about five minutes in length. And I'll have an introduction and, uh, you know, run through the tune. I'll have um, basically two full choruses of the tune with kind of an ending as well. So this one lays out, you know, because it's inherently a ballad and so on and so forth, some of these things just kind of decide themselves. So moving on, you got to figure out one of the more important things is some alternate changes. So you're going to have to look at a lead sheet and figure out what you can do for alternate changes and mark up that lead sheet with some of the alternate changes you have. Now, I usually have a lead sheet that has some alternate changes, but I also do alternate changes as I'm writing the chart. So you're going to have those within the ensemble, such as one beat. Well, I'll show you in just a minute you know, as, we, as we get up along here. So key change, or I mean alternate changes is very important once you figure out a key change. Okay, here is a lead sheet of this one. And uh, this just happens to be Frank Mint, who's um, kind of re-harmonization of this tune. And uh, sometimes, I mean, I, I, I learned a lot from Frank's harmonizations. Sometimes, and he even told me once that, Sometimes he feels like he has to put something in just to, just because the publisher wants him to put an alternate change in there. So you have to be careful with some of these standards. Uh, some of these alternate changes, you know, sound a little strange. But for the most part, I like his, and there's stuff that I may have done anyway. But um, he basically just adds a few 251s, a little bit of turnarounds here and there, and so on and so forth. So as you can see, for example, um, he's going to go right here. From C9, rather than go C9 to F7, he does a little 251 with a, with a uh, whoops, with a um, that G flat 13 sharp 11 works well because there's the melody note. It's a sharp 11, so this one works well. I actually use that one in the chart. Um, over here, I was going to mention that right over here. Here's a, a chance that you could add a. Uh, you go from B9, you could or B flat 9, you could go B9 there and then back to B flat 9, and you'll see that. Later on, when you look at the chart, that's kind of some of the things I did. Here's another one where we do a 2-5 rather than go right to D minor. This is 
really just a substitution for the A7, just the 2.5, with an altered uh, thing there. And I would have done that one anyway. So let's go on. Uh, the bridge, rather than sitting on A minor, um, he does he does that sharp 7 to the A minor 7 to D7 sus. Um, I did pretty much that whole thing. Uh, yeah, so these are, he, notice how he didn't put too many alternate changes in. I actually added more when I did the chart. There's a lot more chord changes in the chart itself. So remember that uh, you don't want to jam so many in there that it just starts to sound really strange. So you do have to use your musical sense about you. Okay, so next thing I do is I just kind of sketch out. I don't do this necessarily on paper. Sometimes I just do it in my head. And, and I work on music when I'm in the shower or like, you know, after I, uh, sometimes when I go to bed, I'm thinking out a chart. Sometimes when I wake up and I don't want to get up right away, I'll just work on a chart in my head. So you can do that. It's not, not a big deal. You just kind of hear it in your head and you kind of figure out things that you would do anyway, uh, maybe at the piano. And it does save you some time and, uh, and uh, you know, it's a good way to do that. So what I decided, I would do an introduction of some kind. And I wanted to get back to that D minor chord. And I wanted to have some snippets of the melody. So, you know, don't reinvent the wheel. Take, take some stuff out of the melody. Kind of what I did. Um, I wanted to use the first alto in the, in the uh, introduction and then have him just kind of lay out for a couple bars at the end uh, so he could do the solo. So remember, this is not an in addition to the big band. This is the alto, first alto player is going to be in the future. Because most gigs, you're not going to have an extra saxophone player. You're going to have to just use the guy that's sitting in the alto one chair. So uh, I wanted to bring a dramatic ending. Uh, and basically preface the first chord of the tune, which is D minor 7, with an A plus 7 sharp 9 chord. And you'll see that when I show you the chart. Okay, so my first chorus, I just wanted the alto, after that dramatic uh, introduction, I just wanted to have the melody stated um, with the rhythm section, you know, real soft and, and easy. Second eight, I start to bring in the ensemble, and uh, alto gets a little help from the ensemble, as you'll see. Um, Here's uh, when you get to the bridge. Here's a good way to, to let the soloist lay out for a minute. I had trumpet melody. It's a perfect range for the melody, so I chose a trumpet melody in unison, and then the alto picks it up uh, about the fifth bar or so and helps out. Once we get into the last A, I do a full ensemble. So you notice how it's kind of been building to the last eight, uh, two thirds of the way through. If you think, if you think of uh, segments of the chart or the entire chart as kind of building up to a, a dramatic high point that really helps so the alto will finish out and then I did this interlude which is basically um, it's basically the the introduction again I could have you know I had I had more time one thing about the jazz club is I have to write these pretty fast so I couldn't sit around for two weeks and figure out you know should, you know how to do a different interlude should I do something different but change keys whatever so this kind of laid out this would be more um, more just straight ahead so the second chorus, remember we're doing two choruses. It's an alto solo, obviously by themselves. And, and the second eight, I started to bring in some soft backgrounds with flugelhorns and uh, some trombone, kind of pian pianistic trombone things, a uh, little little comping in the trombones, kind of such in such a way. Um, in the next section, the trumpet trumpet um, melody alto gets some help. Uh, let's see, no no no, this is oh okay. Alto solo A, A1, and then we're going to the bridge. Okay, trumpet melody. So we're back to, the, to where we, we were before with the trumpet coming in with the melody, getting some help from the band. And the strong ensemble allows the alto to end it with a nice cadenza. Uh, I spelled cadenza wrong. Sorry about that. So um, dies down, uh, and then we have a little bit of a strong ending where the alto, with a, so a strong ending going to a soft chord where the alto can, kind of like noodle over uh, uh, F13, I think it was an F, F major 13, sharp 11, or something like that. So um, underneath the alto, so I don't have trumpets on the last chord, actually. So that's basically it. If you think along those lines, uh, think out your chart in, in um, macro. You can get to the micro when you start arranging it and getting to all the voicings and all that kind of thing. So that's something we'll, we'll go to. So I hope that helped you get on track with laying out an arrangement next time you start one. And I'll talk to you soon.